Hello and welcome to video two in this mini crash course on understanding the basics of sheet music notation. In this video, we'll be going through the staff, clefs, ledger lines, measures and bars, and key and time signatures. So let's get started. First, let's look at a blank piece of sheet music. It is your canvas, your work of art, Everything you put in here will be your form of musical expression on paper for others to learn. But if you don't know what each section of your sheet music means, transcribing your music will be difficult. So first, let's go through the layout and highlight what each part represents. Now as a quick note, in modern music, standard tuning is set to the Stuttgart pitch, which is a 440. Um, in the frequency of hertz. So this is the musical pitch of A above middle C. The staff. The staff is a template on what music is written on. It is five lines and four spaces and looks like this. Each of these lines and spaces represents a letter from the musical alphabet. However, where these letters are positioned on the staff is dependent on which clef is present at the beginning of the staff. So what are clefs? Clefs are the symbol at the beginning of the staff at the start of a piece of music and this indicates the position of pitches from the musical alphabet. Now we have several types of clefs to use in music but only two are mostly used which are the treble and bass clef. The first main clef to learn is the treble clef. It is also known as a G clef because it curls around the G line. Now treble meaning high pitched, refers to instruments of higher pitch such as the flute, violin and the vocal voice. Now treble clef looks like this. Each line and space represents a letter from the musical alphabet. Our bottom line starts at E and the space above is an F. Then the next line is a G and this continues up to the top line which is an F. To help you remember these placements, there are many mnemonics that you can remember, such as for the lines, every good boy does fine, E, G, B, D, F, and for spaces, the word face. In terms of octaves, the standard staff using the treble clef covers E4 to F5. Now our second main clef to learn is the bass clef. It is known as the F clef because it curls around the F line. Now bass meaning low pitched refers to instruments of a lower pitch such as the bass guitar, cello and the bassoon. And it looks like this. Now each line and space represents a letter from the musical alphabet. Our bottom line starts at G and the space above is an A. And then the next line is a B. And this continues up to the top line, which is an A. To help you remember these placements, there are also mnemonics you can learn, such as for lines, good boys do fine always, G, B, D, F and A. And for spaces, all cows eat grass, A, C, E, G. In terms of octaves, the standard bass clef covers G2 to A3. The grand staff is when two clefs are combined by a brace seen on the left of the image. So when exactly is a grand staff used? Now it's most commonly used with the piano because of the instrument's wide range. The bass clef would be used for the left hand, which would play the bass or the lower notes, and the treble clef would be used for the right hand to play the higher notes. Other instruments that use the grand staff include the harp, marimba and the organ. And next we move on to ledger lines, which is a short line added above or below the range of the staff. And it helps us identify the pitch of the note if it goes beyond the usual structure of the basic staff, which is five lines and four spaces. It looks like this. These short ledger lines attach themselves to individual notes that exceed the basic staff. And they attach themselves like this. 
So where do bass and treble clef meet when the grand staff and ledger lines are used? Now our top line for the bass clef is an A3 and our bottom line for the treble clef is an E4. Therefore we have three notes, B3, C4 and D4 and C4 has a ledger line. Measures and bars. To make music easier to read and navigate, we break it down into measures. A thin, singular vertical line represents different measures. These are numbered throughout the sheet music. A thin, double vertical line means it's the end of a section, such as the end of a verse or a chorus. A thin, then thick vertical line means it's the end of the piece of music and the space in between each measure is called a bar and this is where your notes you use to play or to pause and we'll go through music notes in the next video. Key signature. If you've already checked out my other mini course on the basics of music theory you'll understand what a key signature is but for those who don't a key signature lets you know what notes are sharp or flat in a scale However, on sheet music, it shows you which lines and spaces are to be played at a flat or sharp pitch. This is represented by a series of sharp or flat symbols appearing directly after the clef. Our example has one sharp on the F line, which means all F notes, regardless of octave, are to be played as a sharp. This means the key signature is G. For the treble clef, sharps are placed from the A space to the G space, A4 to G5, and flats are placed from the F space up to the E space, F4 to E5. For the bass clef, sharps are to be placed from the bottom A space up to the top G space, A2 to G3, and the flats are placed from the F space below the bottom line up to the E space, F2 to E3. Time signature. A time signature shows you how the music is to be counted. This is by how many beats per bar and the type of note this beat is based on. A time signature will appear at the beginning of the staff after the key signature, like this. The number represents the beats per bar at the top and it's a driving beat to the song which we usually clap or dance to naturally. The most common beats per bar is one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And the bottom line represents the type of note that beat is based on. Now we do go through the different types of notes in the next video. Our example is the most common time signature used, which is four, four. What this means is that each bar has four beats and that beat is based on a note type which is the quarter note. Now the number on top can vary so we could have three beats per bar, one, two, three, one, two, three, which would be a waltz or you could have five beats per bar and so on. We also have two more common bottom numbers, two and eight. The number two is based on the half note and the eight is based on the eighth note. Common time signatures using these two note types are two, two and six, eight. So what are quarter, eighth and half notes? That will be revealed in the next video where we'll be going through each note type and how they look and can be used on sheet music. So that completes video two in this mini crash course on sheet music notation and I hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful. Now if you did give me a beautiful thumbs up and subscribe to the channel um, and any questions leave them in the comments below and when you're ready click on the next video in the series where we learn about note types for sheet music.